Welcome back to the channel, Stefan here on the French Cooking Academy and it seems that we are having a choux pastry crisis. Now that's right. I think uh, across the channel and even in my course, I think the choux pastry is still one of these lessons, one of these techniques that people are a bit like, yeah, should I do it or not? Well, let me tell you one thing. It is a key skill in French cooking, but it is not difficult. The more you do it, the better you become at it and the more you're going to want to make it. So what we're going to do today is a simple recipe called the Gougère. You must have heard about this one. They're simple cheese choux puff. All what we're going to do is a small amount of choux pastry and we're going to add cheese into it. And that's it. Two components, choux pastry and cheese, okay? And I'm going to give you again all the details to show you that honestly, it is easy to make. Get to your pans, let's go. All right, so let's make a little bit of choux pastry. So first question, what is choux pastry? Uh, it is the uh, preparation you use to make choux puffs and eclairs. Huh? If you've eaten a, a French eclair, like a vanilla eclair or chocolate eclair, where well, this is what you use. It can be sweet or it can be, in this case, salty or savory. Huh? So when you associate the choux pastry with salt and then cheese, there's no sugar, you've got a savory version. Now, in itself, honestly, Choux pastry is really not difficult to make. So I'm going to try to break down everything and we're going to make a small portion. So make sure you get all the ingredients ready. Everything is listed in the video description and for the mise en place on how to use the ingredients. I'm going to tell you this as we go. Now let's start. So before we do anything, one of the biggest mistakes from a lot of people when they make choux pastry, they do not preheat their oven beforehand. And what's going to happen? Your puffs are not going to puff because your oven is not hot enough. So first thing, as you can see on the screen, you're gonna crank this up to whatever 200 uh, Celsius, 400 degrees uh, Fahrenheit and make sure your oven is warming up before you start anything. That's super important. All right, so the oven is now ready. Huh? It's uh, preheating slowly. And now we're gonna concentrate on making a choux pastry. Now I'm gonna divide this into three simple steps uh, to make it very, very easy. Step number one, you start on the stove and you use a saucier pan or a uh, saucepan of your choice and all what you're going to do is to put all of the water with the butter and a little bit of salt. I'm going to add a little bit of pepper, you don't have to because that's a savory version. And I'm going to turn this on medium low and wait to bring this to a simmer, basically, which means we're going to just melt the butter into the water. All right. So as soon as it starts to boil, immediately you turn the heat off. And let's recap. Step number one, what have we done? We pour water, we put a piece of butter in the water and we added salt and pepper. That's it. Step number two, once your mixture is ready, you've turned the heat off, we're gonna then add the flour all at once. Uh, so it doesn't matter if there's a little bit on the side, you're gonna try to sift it. I'm using a little sieve here and everything in. As soon as all of the flour is in, you're going to take a wooden spoon and like a bit like a porridge. What we're going to do is to mix the water, butter with that flour. Uh, and we're going to start to have what we call the panade. Okay, it's going to make a ball of dough. And remember the heat is off under here. The heat is not on. Okay, so you see very quickly, see what happened? As soon as you put everything in, you get a, a nice bowl of dough that is very clean. All right, still with me? So, as part of the step number two, and remember the heat off, we've created our bowl of dough. This is the panade, and now we need to dry it. This is still part of the step number two. So we're gonna turn the heat on very low, and you're gonna put your timer on for three minutes. You're gonna basically roll your bowl of dough like this in the pan, and it's gonna remove the excess of moisture that resides in here. That's the whole purpose. And that is the moment also that's gonna help you shoe puff to puff, actually. It is that cooking process that makes everything happen. It's a very important step, three minutes. Okay, so three minutes stop turning my heat off. Uh, I've got my bowl of dough, and if you look in my pan, you will see that I've got that little layer at the bottom. It's a bit dryish, it's ready. So what we're gonna do now, we're gonna transfer this into a large bowl to prepare for our last step, Step number three. So as I said, I've transferred my panade here, my dough into a clean 
cold bowl. I'm using glass, you can use stainless steel. And it needs to cool down a little bit before we add the eggs, which is part of step three. So during that time, uh, you're gonna break your eggs into a bowl, all the eggs, and you're gonna also grate your cheese. All right, so here we are. I've got my cheese, I've got three eggs here, and I'm gonna just beat the eggs, and we're gonna start our step three, which is simply to incorporate these into that. And that's gonna create basically our shoe pastry. That's it. And now for step number three. So the eggs, you don't put them all at once. What you do, you put a little bit first, even up to half. And so you break things down, and then slowly, you're gonna start to mix the whole lot of your spoon. And you will see, don't worry, the eggs will start to incorporate with the rest of the dough. And it's gonna make a coherent mix very, very quickly. Right. So when you've put basically almost three quarters of the egg, I've got only a little bit left, the consistency of the dough starts to take shape. Yeah? And it starts to be a little bit runny. And this is the point where everybody kind of gets scared. Look, there's always kind of that perfect consistency. Uh, it needs to make kind of nice soft peak and flows down like this, not too fast, not too quick. And it really happens at the end, if you put too much eggs, it becomes too runny. But honestly speaking, if it doesn't become extremely runny, it will still work. I've got my last bit of egg left. We should be fine. Uh, incorporate this and we'll be done with then add the cheese. That's it. And step three will be over and done with. All right, so before I add the cheese, in terms of the consistency, like I said, don't stress about it. But when you take a spoon of it, when it flows, it should make, what's the term, ribbons. You see these kinds of ribbons? and it finishes with this kind of, of peaks like that. That's all what you need. If it's not exactly like this, honestly, it does not matter. So when you've got this, all what we're gonna do is to add some cheese in here. Yeah, nice flavor. I'm using a cheddar cheese, but to be honest, you can use Gruyere cheese, you can use Conte cheese, anything you want. It's an aperitif and it's meant to be fun. And it's no, we're not here to stress. Finally, at last, when it's all done, I'm gonna use some fresh nutmeg that I've got and I'm gonna do with a little grating of it in my mix. It's up to you, you don't have to do this. And that's it, we are done. We've made a choux pastry with cheese. So that's even one step above the normal one. And you see, three simple steps. So now, do we need to panic because the dough is in here? Oh, it's staying here, what's gonna happen? No, you can even put this in the fridge if you think it's a little bit too runny. Uh, the, the, the shoe puffs are gonna work even better. So you don't have to stress, you can keep it and use it straight away, or you can uh, leave it in the fridge for an hour or something and use it later. What I'm gonna do now, I'm gonna put everything in my piping bag, and it's a piping bag with a star tip. It's gonna make things even easier. Now, is it difficult to use a piping bag? No, look what I'm doing. I'm using a simple kind of plastic container and I've got my bag in there. I just fold the sides like that, and all what I'm gonna do, I'm taking a rubber spatula and I'm putting my dough straight in like this, boom up if you don't want to do everything at once you want to train just don't put everything just put a little bit of it train on the cookie sheet to make a few puffs see how you go if it fails take it out put the dough back in and repeat it doesn't matter you can kind of play around with shoe pastry it's, it, you know it's pretty solid all right so the next point you can use a cookie sheet with a piece of baking paper on it or you can use a silicone mat you've got your piping bag i've twist the end bit and i'm using my hand here to press and we're gonna to try to make some puffs. Now, it does not matter if your puffs are perfect, and honestly speaking, even when I do it, uh, it always takes some practice. So to start with, we're just gonna make some small one, okay? And just a bit of a triad. All right, so once you've done, you can see I've made this kind of rosette, maybe I should not have, and you got this pointy bit, what you can do? Take a little bit of water like this in a bowl, you put your finger in the water, and boom. You're gonna flatten all the bits here and give the whole thing a little, you know, a normal shape to avoid as a big point at the end, and that's it. All right, so for the oven temperature, I'm putting some cheese on top as well to finish off. You start at 180 to 200 degrees Celsius, that depends on your oven. You can go to 200 degrees Celsius, like about 400 Fahrenheit, and we're gonna cook these on high heat, like very hot oven, for 20 to 25 minutes. Okay, and that's gonna allow the shoe to puff and color. Once we've got the desired color after 20, 25 minutes, we are gonna be reducing the heat to 150 degrees Celsius, put the equivalent Fahrenheit on the screen, and we're gonna dry this shoe puff. 
uh, without ever opening the oven door. Okay, once you start, that's it. You put them in the oven, you wait and see how they look like until the end. And here we are, my two batches of cheese choux puffs or gouger in French already. This is the first batch we've done. And on this one, I really didn't pay attention to the piping techniques and we just put everything in the bag, start piping a bit of cheese and boom, in the oven. This is something that I've done a little bit more by the book. And just to show you the difference, how you go from like the really, really beginner when we have no experience, you can still get these beautiful puffs. And these, by putting a little bit more effort, I'm using the proper technique with the piping bag, going really vertically like this instead of swirling like that, as well as putting some egg wash at the end, gives you a slightly different result. It's rounder, it's a bit browner, but at the end of the day, you know what? There's not much difference. So don't be scared to make your own shoe puffs at home, even if like this, you don't have the perfect technique. I'm telling you that these things here, they are 10 times better than what you get in a shop. So let's, let's, let's try to open one. Okay, like this one. I'm gonna try to crisp up near the microphone. Look at that. So even without experience, let me try. Mm. Well, that's beautiful. But anyway, guys, that's it for me. I'll put all the details and the difference between this two recipes in the video description. If you have any questions, use the comment section. If you make that recipe, hashtag French Cook Academy on Instagram. You can follow me on Facebook, on Patreon. And if you want to learn more about the techniques of French cooking, don't forget our online school with our course, Get Started with French Cooking. That's it for me. I'll see you all next week for another French cooking video. Take care all. Bye-bye.